So in mathematical logic, right, a statement is like a variable in algebra or a, a set in set theory. It's the basic unit that we're going to be building off of. Right? And a statement is two things. First, it's a declarative statement. That is, it makes a statement or declares something. We aren't going to be interested in questions or exclamations or any other type of sentence. And the second requirement is that we have to be able to decide unambiguously whether or not it's true or false. So I've got some examples here for us to look at. And first, uh, notice how I've done what we usually do in math and, and labeled each one with a variable. Just like in any other branch of math, re referring to the complete statement over and over again can get tedious. So it's quicker just to represent each one with a single letter. Now, they're all declarative sentences, so we can check that requirement off. And I would classify the first one as a statement. All right, there's an official biological or veterinary definition of a dog, and two people looking at the same animal with the same checklist to work from should come to the same conclusion. Now, I would also classify the second sentence as a statement. Right, since we can reasonably expect that two people looking at the same window are going to have the same response as to whether or not the statement is true or false. Now, many English statements have some level of ambiguity to them. For example, is it raining or is it just drizzling? Well, as a general rule, you shouldn't go searching for reasons to disqualify a phrase. If two people could reasonably be expected to come to the same conclusion, then the phrase or sentence should go into the statement category. All right, now this last one here, this one is not a statement. And one constitutes cold can vary significantly from one person to the next, even within a reasonable range of temperatures. My stepfather, for example, thought keeping the house at 70 degrees was perfectly comfortable, where to me that was practically freezing. So the next thing we want to be able to do with statements is negate them, right? Re referring back to algebra for a comparison, this reverses the statement just like multiplying a number by negative one reverses its sign. So we'll indicate a negation with this tilde symbol here. And to go from the original statement to the negation of the statement can be as simple as just adding the English word not to the phrase. Now, don't jump to the conclusion that it's always going to be that straightforward, right? We'll see some special statements a couple of lectures down the road where you're going to need to be a little more careful. So th those are statements, and statements are a lot like just a single variable, like an X. By itself, there's not much we can do with it. Where things start to get interesting is when we start to combine statements together. Right? So a compound statement is made by combining two statements with a logical connective, right? Um, there's going to be four of these that we look at over the course of the, of the chapter here. Um, and we're going to start with um, an or, right? So the combination of two statements with an or, uh, it's got a fancy name. It's called a disjunction. Most of the time, I'm just going to refer to it as an or statement. And it's written with this symbol here. All right, so I, I've got this English statement here, you're home by midnight or you check in every half hour. And what I want to do is I want to translate this into an equivalent symbolic statement. All right, and the way I'm going to do that, that the first step is always going to be to define your variables. All right, so I'm going to let P be your home by midnight and I'm going to let Q be you check in every half hour. Okay, so to translate this statement into a symbolic form, I'm going to replace your home by midnight. I'm going to move over here a little bit. I'm going to replace that with P and I'm going to replace you check in every half hour with Q and this word connecting them, the or gets replaced with our new or symbol. 
So this is our second connective, right? Uh, it's an and, right? And we're, uh, again, it's got a fancy name. It's called a conjunction. Most of the time, I'll probably just refer to it as an and statement. Um, and it's written with, it's kind of the opposite of our or symbol. It, instead of being a V, it's, it's an upside down V. So I'm, I'm going to translate this the same way. Um, and I'm, I'm going to use the same variables, right? I'm going to use P for your home by midnight. I'm going to use Q for you check in every half hour. And I'll put the and symbol in between them. All right, so let's look at some more examples here, right? Get a little practice translating English statements into symbolic statements. And the first thing we need to do, we need to kind of pick out the individual statements here. All right, so here I have a statement about the location of the dog. All right, so we'll start there. I'll let P be the dog is outside. And so I'm just going to kind of keep reading. It's raining. That'll be my second one. So Q is it's raining. Then let's see here. I've got, I mean, that's this, the, the dog again, right? So I've already done that one. Um, that's P. Now like, here I've got, it isn't raining. I'm, I'm not going to create a new variable for this, right? Because I'm, I'm looking at what I've already done and I'm thinking, okay, that's the opposite of it is raining. Right, so if, if Q is, it is raining, it's not raining, that's going to be not Q. So I'll put that little tilde in front of it. Uh, let's, let's see, so keep going here. We're not home. All right, that's a new thing. Now I'm talking about our location. So we need a new variable. I'll just keep adding to my list, R. And I'm going to say we are home. And I know that's not exactly what was in the statement, right? When, when you're defining the variables, it, it's not a, a hard and fast rule, but it's customary to define the, the variables with statements that are, in a sense, positive, right? Which is why instead of saying not home, I went with our home, right? So now let's keep going here, right? Uh, the dog is outside. We've talked about that. We aren't home. It's going to be the negation of our and that's everything, right? That, that's all the statements. So now I can think about doing the translation here. Remember, or is a V and is the upside down V. So this first statement would be P or Q. The second would be, let's see, the dog is outside. That's P and it isn't raining. So that's not Q or we aren't home. That's not R. There's the translation. Right now, this next one is a little tricky. And sometimes to, to get the logical statement we want, the English has to get a little tortured. Okay, and that's kind of what's happening here. Okay, this is the dog is outside. That's P. And we aren't home. That's not R. And this, it's, it is not true that out in front. That's, that's a, a way of grouping, all right? So I'm going to negate this entire thing with parentheses. And there, there's, sometimes there's just no graceful way to say a particular thing in English. Okay, so what's next? Well, um, we, we've got a few more examples of statements to look at, some kind of more, more interesting situations. Um, then we'll move on to seeing what we can actually do with these logical statements.